The valley had once been home to some of Ravka's richest estates. One day it was a place where farmers tended crops and sheep grazed in green fields. The next, a dark slash had appeared on the landscape, a swath of nearly impenetrable darkness that grew with every passing year and crawled with horrors. Where the farmers had gone, their herds, their crops, their homes and families, no one knew. Stop it, I told myself firmly. You're only making things worse. People have been crossing the fold for years, usually with massive casualties, but all the same. I took a deep breath to steady myself. No fainting in the middle of the road, said a voice close to my ear as a heavy arm landed across my shoulders and gave me a squeeze. I looked up to see Mal's familiar face, a smile in his bright blue eyes as he fell into step beside me. Come on, he said. One foot in front of the other. You know how it's done. You're interfering with my plan. Oh, really? Yes. Faint, get trampled, grievous injuries all around. That sounds like a brilliant plan. Ah, but if I'm horribly maimed, I won't be able to cross the fold. Mal nodded slowly. I see. I can shove you under a cart, if that would help. I'll think about it, I grumbled. But I felt my mood lifting all the same. Despite my best efforts, Mal still had that effect on me. And I wasn't the only one. A pretty blonde girl strolled by and waved, throwing Mal a flirtatious glance over her shoulder. Hey, Ruby, he called. See you later. Ruby giggled and scampered off into the crowd. Mal grinned broadly until he caught my eye roll. What? I thought you liked Ruby. As it happens, we don't have much to talk about, I said dryly. I actually had liked Ruby, at first. When Mal and I left the orphanage at Keremsen to travel for our military service in Politsnaya, I'd been nervous about meeting new people. But lots of girls had been excited to befriend me, and Ruby had been among the most eager. Those friendships lasted as long as it took me to figure out that their only interest in me lay in my proximity to Mal. Now I watched him stretch his arms expansively and turn his face up to the autumn sky, looking perfectly content. There was even, I noted with some disgust, a little bounce in his step. What is wrong with you? I whispered furiously. Nothing, he said, surprised. I feel great. But how can you be so, so jaunty? Jaunty? I have never been jaunty. I hope never to be jaunty. Well, then what's all this? I asked, waving a hand at him. You look like you're on your way to a really good dinner, instead of possible death and dismemberment. Mal laughed. You worry too much. The king sent a whole group of Grisha Pyros to cover the skiffs, and even a few of those creepy heart renders. We have our rifles, he said, patting the one on his back. We'll be fine. A rifle won't make much difference if there's a bad attack. Mal gave me a bemused glance. What's with you lately? You're even grumpier than usual, and you look terrible. Thanks, I groused. I haven't been sleeping well. What else is new? He was right, of course. I'd never slept well, but it had been even worse over the last few days. Saints knew I had plenty of good reasons to dread going into the fold, reasons shared by every member of our regiment who had been unlucky enough to be chosen for the crossing. But there was something else, a deeper feeling of unease that I couldn't quite name. I glanced at Mal. There had been a time when I could have told him anything.